All right, welcome, welcome, traders. This is Christian from Roberts, Tribeca Trade Group with your end of day recap for Thursday. Uh, for Thursday, and uh, wow, some big movers today. And um, I'm going to start with the S and P uh, just for a quick second because I saw somebody who was just kind of sending out a chart with a whole bunch of bullets on on today on the s p and and i'm like really are you serious uh you're really going to overanalyze this that much um we basically you know with our value errors which we give a nice value area a presentation last night if uh, if you missed it it's um it's pinned to my profile page on twitter so you can find it there but you know i mean we're really the, the S&P is not moving. Um, it's not an index market. So trying to overanalyze a 10 basis point move uh, is kind of wasting your time. So I'm not going to spend much time, much more time on this. But I do want it, it just kind of um, the reason why I'm talking about it is because we really have a stock pickers market again that's continuing here. And you have to kind of look outside of the S&P and just kind of ignore it. Um, you know, there's not really any trades to do here. So if you're spending time on the on the S&P and trying to trade it, uh, I, I think it's a little bit of a waste of time. Um, so we can look at the daily chart and it's it's basically just, just chop. Um, we don't really have anything to say until we get above 2476 or below 2438 and that's it you can analyze all you want here but um there's there's really not much to 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 say or not much conclusions that you can draw from this nasdaq again seems to be a little bit more has a little bit more strength um we try to kind of uh, rally a couple times today and we just don't have the momentum again it's it's september uh you know it's just one of those months where there's not a lot of momentum to it so uh, it does look stronger than the other major U.S. indices, but you know we're above value. So we kind of look at this. That's Nasdaq futures. If you don't trade Nasdaq futures, or if you don't look at futures um, for the queues, I would say 144.20. Um, that's your support, and I would say stay long the queues until um, we break. So you could see the move for the queues. You know, if you take out the move, if if you take out. Um, uh, the pre-market move, which futures have, but you can see how small the range is. It's really ridiculous. Um, so it's good to kind of gauge what the, what the overall market is doing, but I, I see little to no opportunities with trying to trade the indices right now. Uh, IWM continues to be a little bit of a problem area. Uh, banks are the biggest weight, which is where I'm going to go to first. Well, actually, before I talk about the banks, really what kind of caught my eye today was what was going on with the risk-off uh, areas of the market. So the yen, you know, there was an ECB meeting this morning. Uh, they basically kind of left it up. Draghi in, in the Q&A segment talked about really October is where they may uh, change things a little bit in terms of either interest rates or, or, or reducing the balance sheet um, over, over, there, over there in terms of um, tapering off quantitative easing. So that's going to be October. So we've got another month of um, I guess trying to figure out what they were, what they're going to do. Um, until then, so so the yen was up 70 basis points. I mean, bonds were absolutely on fire. We saw a lot of call buying. We saw multiple buyers in TLT. You know, I talked about this pre-market. Um, you know, so you can look at what TLT they've been adding. I mean, th this is um, inflows. So look at the big inflow. This is probably from two days ago, but still, you know, the volume has been picking up in some of the bond ETFs. So this is uh, plus 20 year bonds, uh, but we saw the same thing. I think it was in, um, in IEI. Um, take a look at the inflow. So there's money that's being put to work. There is definitely money that is being put to work in, uh, in bonds. So I tweeted this out this morning. Um, about money being added to um, to treasuries, which again, you look at IEI, there really hasn't been any any flows, uh, inflows or outflows until recently. So big inflow. Again, look at TLT. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is the biggest inflow, I think, of this year, believe it or not. Yeah, I mean, it certainly is. Um, and the volume is warning that. So that's, that's buying. But yeah, biggest inflow of the year. So what do we see today in TLT? A lot of buyers, uh, you know, a lot of aggressive buying going on. So... Uh, 2,800 of the of the September 132 calls, some short-term stuff. Uh, then there was a pretty decent call, uh, call spread buyer. So the October 130, 135, this traded 15,000 times. So where is 130? I mean, it's right above. So you're looking at, let's just get this out of the way, but you're basically looking at someone thinking that it goes back up to here, which is, um, you know, we're now above, we're basically at where we were pre-election. 
right? This is the big sell-off um, after the election. So we're back to there, and and it looks like uh, there is, you know, there's they are thinking that there is going to be more upside. When I say they, whoever's buying these big orders, hedge funds, investment banks, uh, uh, institutions. Um, but that's a that's a pretty big size order in in TLT. So that's going up. And then you look at gold. Um, so this does not this really does not give me a warm and fuzzy feeling about the overall market. Again, it's it is September, but um, look at these charts. I mean, they're breaking out. Gold, bonds, and and the yen. This is not these are not positive signals. I would say if you kind of look at at some of these areas. Um, you know, I've been long GDX and I've been long the yen and thinking that um, that uh, I'm I was going to lose out on these, but but GDX is doing really well here. Um, GDX is one of the best performing sectors, so it continues to break out. I've been long since the 200-day moving average, so um, really nice move continuation um, for the gold miners. You do have a little bit of resistance up here, but I'm going to stay long here. And um, so these are the <laughs> these are the areas that it's 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 a kind of a head scratcher because then you go over to the other things that performed really well today are, are Chinese internet. I mean, there's really no um, explanation for that. I mean, it's a 52 week high for the Chinese internet ETF. So you know you see a lot of people on on Twitter and they're like, wow, look at the move in uh, Wuba. Look at the move in. Uh, it, wow, this YY is really setting up nicely. Guys, they're all moving up. It's not just one. So you can, uh, you know, I kind of chuckle a little bit because some people just look at single stocks. I look at both single stocks and ETFs to see if the whole group is moving or if it's just one. You know, so sometimes that, that, that basically happens where it's, where it's just basically... Um, where it's just basically one name out of the group. But when you look and you see the whole Chinese internet group up 1.6%, um, yeah, I mean, you can go through each name and talk about how, how remarkable it is and what a nice setup it is. But it's really, it, you, could, you could basically throw a dart at some of these names. They're all moving up. Um, there's been real nice performance out of a couple of them. Uh, you know, I will glance at a couple of them here. BZUN continues to move up from the lows after earnings. So nice bounce back. A lot of them kind of made this, um, made that move. NTES um, actually looks interesting here. NetEase is, is back to the 200-day moving average. So this looks interesting to me. Um, BABA was up, was also quietly up 1.4% today. JD.com up a half a percent today. Speaking of YY, you know, this is another name that kind of uh, fell a little bit. You know, all these names ran into the earnings report, so a lot of them sold off a little bit, but they're all um, coming back up here. You can see almost an MACD crossover for this one. So if you don't want the single name exposure and you're having a difficult time trying to pick one out of this group, you can just own the ETF. Um, it's a 52-week high. It also looks like it's trying to cross over here. But again, it's just funny to me. Like, what, somebody be like, oh my God, what's going on in, in, in Baidu? What's go Guys, they're, they're all moving up together. So, um, you know, keep in mind. So there's also a couple other groups that look pretty healthy. Um, you look at the software and, and tech ETF, this is, uh, you know, your ATVI is in here, your, uh, which, which had a real nice day today. All the gaming stocks had a real nice day today. ATVI was up, uh, was up 2.8%, um, a nice move where it needed to hold, you know, it just held yesterday, uh, the top of value. So real nice bounce, but it's also your Salesforce. Um, you know, all these names really look pretty strong. Salesforce, shop. Um, you know, 52 week high. So you got a lot of names uh, that just smaller groups that are that are doing it. Uh, so kind of weird, again, that some of these tech names, some of the Chinese internet names are going up with bonds and with gold, but um, it is what it is. That's what kind of market we have right now. So that's some of the, the really strong performers. Robotic stocks is another one, by the way. Um, you look at robotics, another, another group making a 52 week high today at uh, 37.19. So you know, you go back to what I was talking about in the beginning of the tape or the, uh, the beginning of this video, why the S&P is not like, why even bother looking at the S&P? So why are these names uh, well bid and, and, and the S&P is not moving? Well, look at what the banks are doing. The banks are a very big weight. Um, so if you go ahead and you look at SPX, um, well, I can't show this, but banks are about, I think about a 20% weight. 
um, in the S&P, maybe a little bit less. But yeah, these banks are breaking down. And, and a lot of it is because of bonds. Um, the move, if, remember, bonds move up and rates go down. It's not healthy for banks. But um, I actually put on a short today in, in KRE. So I don't really see any support for KRE all the way down to you know maybe to this level first, maybe 40, 46. If it gets past that, I would say all the way down to 44 um, as these things. You know, maybe we, we it comes back and retests, but um, you know, down 2.6 percent. So again, you got some groups that are really outperforming, and you got names like this or groups like this that are that are completely breaking down. Telecom stocks too, IYZ down 2.8 percent. So another area that I think is shortable. So. Something that I really haven't done all year long is, uh, you know, look at look at a lot of different shorts in this market. But, you know, this is a th this is below the 200 day moving average. I mean, an, an excellent group, I think, to short right now. Um, insurers, we know about this group as well. That group, this group got hammered the other day, just like the banks did. This is breaking below the the 200 day moving average and doing it fast. This was just two days ago. So we had an inside day on Wednesday and, and a big move down. Um, the media names also with Disney um, had an awful day today, down 1.2%. They look like they're going to break as well. Um, consumer discretionary was hit pretty hard too. Disney is in that, of course, um, as well. So again, you look at five or six groups that really did well today and five or six groups that did really poorly. Um, the result is the S&P not moving. All right. So um, that's today's uh, that's today's recap in terms of just uh, movers um, in terms of option activity. You know, I didn't even talk about the the um, I didn't even talk about um, the healthcare names, which we've just seen one after another after another. Um, really interesting here because it's not biotech. Um, biotech was flat today. Um, biotech made the move last week. This week, it's healthcare. Um, so this is one, two, three, four days of consolidation for XBI. This is, that's the biotech ETF. Look at the look at what XL, XLV has done this week. And you re, if you remember, don't really hear too many people talking about it. But there was a huge buyer of XLV back on April 22nd. Um, so that's out. That's on my Twitter page. Um, you could look at XLV. Um, but it was, I think, seven seventy five hundred of December calls that were purchased, all the way back here on the twenty second. So um, I think they purchased those for fifty cents. They're marking above a dollar fifty. So really strong uh, move. And again, that was highlighted in our end of day note on the twenty second, as well as uh, our video. And uh, you could actually see that um, I specifically have a tweet out about that on the twenty second. Um, so XLV really really strong. So I could go through all these names, but um, there's about five of them. I played AGN today. It was a, there was a weekly call buyer in this name. Um, AGN works pretty well on aggressive option activity. So that was right in the beginning of the day. Um, I actually added to it here and uh, had more than a double on that trade. So really nice one. But they've been going after AZN <coughs> just uh, repetitively. The last couple of days, they bought more of that one. It's a lot of the, the A stocks too, like names that start with A. <laughs> that's a maybe that's a theme. Uh, invest in in healthcare names that start with A. Ab AbV up uh, six percent today. Um, look at this name, another healthcare name, New Link Genetics. So this is a biotech name, but up seventy four percent today. So this is really where the momentum is. Tech, healthcare, and Chinese internet names. S select tech. Um, Facebook caught my eye today. Uh, you know. We talked about using the value areas to trade in last night's webinar. Look at this thing right here. Here's your support. Here's where you got in. So kind of what we've been doing in the trading room is just waiting through the first half hour and seeing how things, because it seems like there's a pattern of volatility coming in into the beginning of the day. And as long as you uh, are patient, you could pick some nice, uh, find some nice spots for against support. Look at Facebook, do the same exact thing on the bottom of value. So value is really coming into play here. Uh, and, and giving some good signals on, on where to trade. Um, so besides every other name that we, I mean, Pfizer, even Pfizer, which we don't see a lot of call buying in January and October calls. This one didn't pop yet. I would keep an eye on that one. Um, you know, BMS, Bemis, um, you know, we've seen just aggressive call buying the last couple of days. Today, there was an announcement that they're going to um, possibly uh, put themselves up for sale. So got a pop on that one. Um, Lowe's, some calls in this one. I trade, I, 
I uh, play this one out of the end of the day, small winner in lows. Um, I waited, again, using the value areas for the, for the first candle above the value area. So it was a small winner. I took it off at the end of the day. Uh, Wells Fargo. So speaking of the banks and um, a couple, we did see some dip buying in a couple of the financials. This one is going all the way out to June. Um, WFC, um, you could see that there's a total of 14,000, almost 15,000 of the June 55 calls. So again, somebody going out, you know, almost a year out uh, thinking that this is overdone. If you look at the WFC chart on the daily, you could see that it's really over oversold. Um, what's the RSI here? RSI is a 23. So using the RSI indicator to kind of give you a heads up that this group is, especially this one is getting really oversold. So maybe due for a bounce. Um, there was also some AIG calls that hit. Um, again, uh, this looks like a breakdown to me. I'm not sure if I would want to play this one, but AIG looks like uh, it's it's breaking down. There's 10,000 of the October 62 and a halfs. And also this one went up uh, fairly aggressively, the September 20, 22nd calls. Um, and, and, you know, I really try to keep all my option trades on one page. So this is a select. There's actually more than that. Um, I thought AMBA was good. I actually put on a trade in AMBA today um, using a call spread. This is Now, this is a counter trend trade. Um, but with GoPro moving up, uh, you know, and again, after earnings, um, you know, I'm looking for a bounce after earnings. The earnings was, I thought, was pretty good looking. But um, interesting that we got up to the 200-day moving average and failed pretty decently. But So I'm looking to play a little bit of a, of a reversion in this one. Um, we'll see how that uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, also, some weekly Xilinx calls went up. Um, that was a nice winner as well in the trading room. So pretty active day trading. Um, there were some, just some really good signals today um, for Xilinx. So uh, this one kind of fizzled, I think, late in the day, but calls right on this bar um, in this one. And the implied volatility shot up in the, in the weeklies, which um, helped. So um, that's it for today's recap. Again, uh, a lot of things going on. You know, if you, if you don't trade actively and you kind of look at the market's beginning and end of day and you're like, ah, oh, S&P didn't do anything today. Uh, you're kind of missing the picture a little bit in terms of the, the sector separation that we've, that we've got going on. All right, guys, uh, have a great night and I'll see you tomorrow morning. Thanks.